peel it layer by layer and that's mm -hmm. the purpose of this light to watch that naturally unfold because you really can't just be born into understanding it all no not at all you've got to experience it knowledge wisdom and understanding This is Monica Perez, and here with me today is one of my favorite guests, one of my returning guests, the go-to for me for various topics that I don't always cover, but my mind loves to cover. It is, I'm sure you will recognize, our dear friend Noble from the CFR Network. Hello, Noble. Good day to you, mademoiselle. How art thou today? I'm very well, thank you, and I'm try to separate out like my own personal well-being from my worries about the world but i want to get into meta discussion yes. bigger than the world and i want to make sure people know so you're the cfr network and i, I love that because it's kind of triggering like mm -hmm. cfr for us is the council of foreign relations yours is the chatham house the royal institute yes. for international affairs but we have the cfr and but you, I've always understood the CFR to be culture and freedom and righteousness. Yes, but it can be fluid. Sometimes it's, it stands for other stuff. Tell just tell us a little bit about your show and what that means. Well, I think the two words to encap well the three words I guess to encapsulate it to start off would be the exploration of the human experience. That's my main objective, and that's what I like to do when I have guests on as you know, from very different sort of um, professions and backgrounds, ethnicities, etc., I try not to stay in the box. I've got a very sort of wide palette, let's say, knowledge-wise. So I try and draw on that because so many things are interlinked. They're so interlinked. So talking about ancient Mesopotamia, ancient Britain, you can see migration patterns, we can see similar cultures, you know, it's, I think what I aim and try and do is try and, in essence, destroy the barriers, destroy all of this, these labels, and let people really understand, understand, overstand that we're all people, ultimately. Some of us human, some of us are mankind. But ultimately, we're, we're, you know, we, we, we walk with two legs, we put our, our trousers on or our slacks on one leg at a time. And all we want to do is ultimately is to, is to eke out an existence. Well, actually, more than eking out an existence, we actually want to live. We want to be happy. We want to be fruitful and multiply if that's your thing. But we've got so many challenges and speed bumps in the road that um, we need people like us to um, be that beacon of light sometimes. Well, I love that approach of yours and I love how approachable you are. And there's just so many things in just what you said that I find really fascinating and worthwhile. And one of the things is that you look at the human being. My mother always taught me like met at people Everybody puts people be wowed by a movie star or whatever. She just says, he puts his pants on one leg at a time like everybody else. And it took me a long time really to realize what that means. And it's the essence of the understanding of equality. And it goes to both, both aspects of the injustices of inequality, whatever you want to say those are, from, from not exalting these people who have elite status in the material world or so we would call that and then but also most important in what my upbringing was not to not to look down on people because of their job or their appearance or even their intelligence or any of that and i feel like the the whole racial divide the um all of the identity politics, yeah. the woke stuff is really designed to keep us apart, to keep us labeling each other, to keep us from really respecting each other as like human beings with a soul of equal values. Yes. And that's a timeless thing. But then you lay on top of that the cultural context, which is our time. Mm. And and that I think is like the the essence essence of like what we need to understand to 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 be okay to not be depressed all the time or afraid all the time. Yes, 
because that is a huge, huge challenge, especially at the moment. It doesn't matter where you turn. If, if I mean, you'll have listeners, I have listeners who kind of flirt with alternative information, but don't necessarily, you know, consume it like 100% of their time, you know, and, and not even so much 100%, let's say 70% of the time, you're just looking at alternative information, alternative views. Some people are dipping in like, oh, that sounds interesting. You know, I can go to Noble to listen to that, or I can go to Monica to get this kind of view versus just watching the flicker rates of the old LI vision and just consuming the mass lies and manipulation and being so scared. Oh my God, those African-Americans, look what they're doing. They're attacking these poor people in the street. Why? Oh my God, we, we need to buy another gun. I want to get a brown in 17. Let's go. Let's um, up our target practice at the old range. Um, uh, maybe we could even consider moving it. Just it, it just it puts people in a, a, a right, a flight or flight mode, and it's kind of like, well, why are we in this constant state? And outside of the, your general community, i.e., the black people, let's take the race out of it, of necessity out of it. We've got high crime rates, high crime rates because the degradation of society, the degradation of public services, the withdrawal. I mean, we've seen the military militarization of the police force across the world. <clears throat> pardon self again, especially in America and in the old UK, the brains of the beast and the belly of the beast. 10, 15, 20 years ago, our police force were dressed in black and white. They had red, had white shirts on. They had hats. They didn't have stab through vests. They didn't have tasers. They didn't have firearms if you were in the capital. They didn't have submachine guns. They didn't literally look like stormtroopers. Now they're in all black. It's 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 so intimidating just walking around, especially there. You're saying yes. y'all have the yeah. SWAT thing? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's messed up. It's it's as I say, we're kind. It's we've been desensitized to it now, of source, because the wow children growing up now they've never experienced what we've experienced. Unfortunately, we it sounds nostalgic. But it's the truth, the kind of things we've experienced growing up, having a, pl a, a bobby, as they're known, the bobby on the beats. He would patrol your neighborhood. You would know him. That's PC Brown. That's so-and-so. Oh, how's it going, Noble? How's the football? Or are you keeping yourself out of trouble? There was a, a, a link to the police force. At that time, if you was good and you did, wasn't, you didn't cross paths in the wrong way in regards to the police force, you would think, look, that is a noble position. They're protecting the community. We're not seeing the police doing crazy things, planting drugs and beating people up, killing people. There was none of that. There was stuff like that going on. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. It wasn't a utopia back in sort of the 80s, early 90s, but it wasn't. There was a link. The community understood what the police was there for. It wasn't just for generation of finances via the way of fines. That's what it seems to be now. It's policy enforcement rather than looking after people, preventing things from happening. Oh, well, I've been told that Steve over there has got a problem with the, the Riley family. Maybe I should go and speak to them. Just, you know, calm it down a little bit. Oh, no, 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 no. No. Let's let them war. Let's let them attack each other. And then we can arrest them. That will mean that there's more work for the police to do, more work for solicitors to do. That's more finances. They get arrested. They go to jail. More finances. It's just a propagating system. That's so interesting that you should put that that way because I've noticed that phenomenon with Social Security and like putting your parents in a home or whatever, or even it started with giving them social security so they didn't have to kiss your ass. So they yeah. with you when they were old, they felt independent and you didn't have to kiss their ass because you weren't depending on them. Um, you, there was just no intergenerational dependency after social security. And, but it outsourced that security that um, to the, to the government. 
And you're saying the same thing about crime. And I absolutely, I hadn't thought of that before, but so many things that I've looked into recently feed right into what you're saying. So like the first thing you said is that people will think, oh, I got to move now. Mm -hmm. I got to move. And that is, to me, the beginning of the end. It's emigration, immigration. It's sending your kids off to college. It's it's um, having a draft, having a war. It's a economic disruption. And one thing that is in an executive order of Biden's from there have been several related ones, but let's say over the last 12 months, and it's come up as a theme a couple of times, is they want they're trying to achieve get this, economic integration locally. Okay. So they, they're would they going out of their way to go to upper class suburbs or upper middle class suburbs and putting uh, housing in there, like a, a subsidized housing, government housing in there so they can, they literally have a stated goal of integrating what? people of different economic... Which, of course, is literally just asking for trouble because another pattern that I've seen as I research this stuff is they start these programs that are 100 percent dependent on government aid and they withdraw the aid and they leave this terrible, dysfunctional, rootless system that will cause conflict. Because I do believe that we have a pathocracy that literally goes out of its way to cause conflict, but another stated goal of like these 15 minute cities, which is, I want to talk to you about that, is is greatly increased population density, like 10 times yes. increased population density. So you take the movement of people and you take that density and then we get what you were saying, which is if there's a problem, you don't get involved, you don't care about the person. And ultimately when it gets out of hand, you call the cops. So when I was growing up, my father, who was a bit antisocial, it's not like we had great relationships with the neighbors at all. And plus he had my <laughs> neighborhood built for like two kid families. And he, we were absolutely forbidden from calling the cops ever. Mm. He said, if you have a problem, you need to nut up and knock on their door yeah. and talk to them about yeah. it. And he said, if you can't do that, you're not calling the cops on them. And I got married and moved into a neighborhood with my husband, my first house. And he said, that, that, there's something going on over there. I'm calling cops. I was like, what? <laughs> what? Are you out of your mind? And, uh, and, and he just had, it never occurred to him. And I, I explained it to him and he said, oh, you're completely right. And he never, would never even consider that again. And then we got to know our neighbors and they were so nice. And I would never sick the police. But it, I hadn't realized like that you can't. It's very hard to have a system like that when you have people who don't even speak the same language artificially put together that even even in like you were like New York is a melting pot, let's say. But I, I know because I'm the child of immigrants who uh, or grandchild of immigrants who went there, but they went there before there were safety nets and stuff. So three or four or whatever my grandparents stayed and one went back. But they were there because they had the same values. The values were purely economic. They left their home and everything because they just wanted the opportunity to work. But that's enough. When you start artificially integrating people, I feel like it's a recipe for conflict, whether intentional or not. But I hadn't thought of that angle of calling the cops on people, creating actual crime. So where we were, which we had a little interruption, I will tell you, and I wanted your reaction, is that I had noticed that, like, with Social Security and stuff, we we disconnected our, our communities, our families, and we got super dependent on the government. And you pointed out that it's the same with the, with communities and violence and, um, cops and just bringing yes. the government into things that we used to be able to handle ourselves. Totally, totally. And I think, okay, now you've brought it back to my remembrance. So where I was going to go is I'm I'm now going to bring it to the growing year of 2023. And as you've highlighted, you, you, your your grandparents immigrated across the waters, etc. My grandparents did exactly the same thing. And there's a huge difference in regards to back then. And now, clearly, time has elapsed. But you mentioned safety nets. Um, people, are, you know, historically, our, our grandparents came over uh, to work hard and to potentially make a better life for themselves. And I'm not denying that many people who seek 
you know, uh, immigration status in America or in England aren't trying to do the same thing. But there is clearly a a percentage, I would say, 30, 40 percent of these people are not coming to work hard and contribute to society to, you know, form part of the United States of America or the United Kingdom. They're coming over on dinghies. They're strapping themselves to underneath the, of vehicles, heavy goods vehicles. They're coming over here clearly illegally. But the governments, which I have no part in in regards to the laws that they make and having an idea or an influence and in voting in prime ministers, which we haven't done in quite some time. <laughs> I know! <laughs> It's like, you know, no one's, everyone seems to skip this point. We have all these ooh, <laughs> Prime Minister, Prime Minister, Trust. Uh, 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 okay, soon at now. So we've got, we're spending 30 million pounds on these detention camps, called, called these immigration camps. We're block booking two star hotels, three star hotels, four star we're hotels, five star hotels. In, and you can imagine a five-star hotel in the little hamlets. <laughs> we don't necessarily call them hamlets over here, as you know. A little village with the population of maybe four or five hundred people are having that amount in immigrants come to that hotel, which has been totally blocked out. A, a private security firm will then patrol those those parameters and you will have... 600 plus 400 plus people who some of them are obviously they're seeking a better life let's let let's not forget that but we've got so many people who have deliberately destroyed their passports they're seeking immigration they get in they get in debit cards like like you know those um page you go um master cards and stuff with a thousand pounds on there uh, some of some people are fortunate to go through the system pretty quickly and they be there they push them from down south and they bring them up to my neck of the woods the midlands and to birmingham and then they come here uh, with, uh, with a crazy culture shock oh my god there's there's too much multiculturalism here i expected just to be around european people there's all indians here there's there's black people here oh this is this is too much for me but yes monica these people are, are fleeing persecution they're coming here for a better life, but the life here, which for some strange reason, they don't accept all of the gifts that they've been given, i.e. a free house, <laughs> of all of this money, uh, access to an opportunity to have your own business. Whereas someone who's a, a third generation, quote unquote, immigrant, migrant, I don't, I'm not afforded the opportunity. There you go. Here's ten thousand pounds, noble. Start your own your own business here. Have have that, and we'll give you some grants along the way. It it's a total displacement of the ones who, the Afro Caribbeans and the some Africans and the Asians who came and rebuilt rebuilt this country. We've served our purpose now, Monica. It's time to replace those lot. What do you think is behind this? Get into that a little bit more because it's happening here too. I've always noticed that we have Somalians in like yeah. Wisconsin or something. Like that's that's not a problem with a wall, a border wall between Mexico and Texas. Mm. Like mm. that's a deliberate placement, and they and they have the same thing. I have um friend from Cape Verde, and he says there are billboards that that uh, and I know people from Massachusetts, and it's true. Yes. Tell people from Cape Verde to go to like Brockton, Massachusetts, yeah. or someplace I never even heard of. Mm. And so they do that. They do the hotels. They they it's a deliberate like there's no I feel like if you're Chinese people come to California, like there's a long history of that. And mm -hmm. Japanese people in San Francisco, Mexican people in Texas, there are people waiting for you there. Yes. And that disruption. So can you tell me what you think is really at the heart of it pure evil or is it incompetence or is it, it just capitalism right it's you know, the latter kind of slavery. Okay. it's the latter it's the latter three first kind of slavery capitalism it's the it's the replacement of cultures and and i guess indigenous people because you've got you've got uh you know people here who even when my grandparents came they wasn't very happy about that monica 
they wasn't happy. They, they, they you know, my grandparents w went through a horrendous time with some people here. Um, so why did they emigrate? Why did they leave? They came from the so West Indies. Right? The West Indies, because we were we were given, we were sold the idea of look, there's going to be opportunities here for you. You can have a better standard of education, a better uh, standard of living, quote unquote. Um, you know, you can your children can be raised in England. Now let's let's think of the times. Of course, we're from a now it's called a developing country. Back then, it was a third world country. Yeah, you know under um, Commonwealth rules. So we had the opportunity to go over there if we spent like a thousand odd pounds um, at that time and, you know, take that long voyage. Some were fortunate enough to be able to fly, but many of us came on ships. Many of us came on ships. So I'm reading this book called The Milner Fabian Conspiracy, and it talks about how it was their idea to bring in to create the commonwealth and allow that uh movement of people to mm -hmm. to just disrupt the culture so it oh i've always observed it not only disrupts the culture of the people arriving like mm -hmm. you know people who are born in america would worry about that but it greatly disrupts the culture i assume of the places that people are leaving yes totally it and draws... a lot of them don't want to no, it, not at all, because you think about what they're doing. They're taking all of the excellence from St. Kitts, from Jamaica, from Antigua, all of the bright sparks who have something about them, like I want to do something. I, I love my country, but look, I can really like find real success if I go to the UK or if I go to America. I can really do that. So then those islands are now left with people who still have that drive and ambition, but they're not those people. Those aren't the people who would have maybe taken the island out of the colonial mindset, right. Right. away from the World Bank and the, you know, the International Monetary Fund, who love to be in the Caribbean, love to give out these, these um, loans. Oh, but um, Jamaica, yes, we, we, we will give you 30 million. Of course we will. But, but, but. You cannot build any roads. I don't want any roads built. I need a nice new port in San, Anto in, in, in San Antonio or wherever, or Portmore or wherever, because we need the bigger ships to come, you see. We want, to, we want bigger ships to come, so that's more industry, and we can get more tourists, so we can help your tourism, your tourism sort of industry, because most islands concentrate and heavily rely on tourism rather than the natural resources, the natural resources that's so vulnerable. Tourism totally. is vulnerable, and it's not great. It, that's not a great culture. Like that's not a great thing to build your life around. Serving outsiders it seems like a strange way to raise your kids. You want some choices, I would think. Of course, of course. And when you look at it in 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 its greater sense, it's not like okay, well, no, but you're a bit being a bit harsh on you. You know, it's their island and stuff, so it's going to be their hotels. Oh no, no, no huge conglomerates come in and buy the whole of the beach in some islands they've had private beaches which should be illegal there should be no place that you can go as a local and not be able to enter that beach it's it's you know so no locals don't have access they just work there the most they could be would be a manager of a hotel so there's nothing in it for them they're just literally working paycheck to paycheck serving the tourism the tourists as you say sometimes it's a good experience and it's a fair exchange other times you have snobby people who want the world they want they want the turn down service every night i've never i've never had a turn down i i refuse it i'm like well, well you don't need to do that yeah i didn't even I know what it was monica crawl into <laughs> bed by myself yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so i want to understand something uh, I've recently, so my, like, political awakening was, I just, I looked at government and, and just in my experience, my observations felt that it was hopeless and a disaster and I became an anarcho-capitalist and I was like, okay, government always works against the people 
and it will be better off without it. And we could survive without it because mm. society is self-ordering. I was a waitress for a long time and no one was forced to give me a tip, but everybody paid. Everybody gave me a tip. Uh, practically every single person I ever waited on. It was voluntary. And but I I was a priest who listens to me sent me a book called um, like Libertarianism and the Church. And it's not about it's about Catholic social teaching. It's not about socialism at all. There's no socialism. There's no welfare. There's nothing. But there is this idea that the government, I don't know, it's it's a radical idea for people who think like me, but it's the historical idea that mm. government should actually be part parcel with the people and should have laws. I'm not talking about welfare. I'm just talking about laws like yes. beaches are gods, you know, mm. like beaches are ours or whatever. This is our mm. island. What is your feeling? Do you have a, a kind of doctrine about just government? So what, what do you think government what the limits of government should be, what it should be responsible for. Govern meant, meant his mind, govern, yeah? It, it, so if we remove that concept, or those, that terminology, we should just have a system, a system in place where we have um, elected, not selected, but elected on a, maybe a yearly basis, where as long as you're, you're, you can provide, we can see the fruits of your labor. We've asked for this. We've came with these problems and you've, 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 you've came with the solutions and you've put it in place and we haven't been, you know, too out of pocket kind of thing. We've, we're, we're happy with everything we've asked you to do as a, as the, as the county, as the town, as the city, you're doing what we're asking. When that doesn't happen, we then need to seek somebody else to take your place. Because all this is about is making sure that things run, our garbage is collect collected, you know, the streets are clean, in the winter we don't have um, leaves in the gutter so we block up the drains and cause this flooding which is a major problem in the UK because in, our, in, our, in the wisdom of these demons, they stay, we've got a Victorian piping sewer system a Victoria sewer system, but yet every flipping where you go, we've got housing development springing up absolutely everywhere. Woo, 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 woo. A thousand houses here. 500,000 houses here. But they do nothing in regards to the expansion and maintenance of the drains. And then as soon as any heavy rain comes, either the, the new development starts to flood because they're, they're on a floodplain and they're building houses all over these floodplains. And then we do all of the extra stuff coming through. And then you've got these weirdos driven by, driven by, by big corporations where everything's at a disposable wipe now. So you've got women. Who oh my bought... gosh. Yes. I've it's... seen that. <laughs> <laughs> that problem. Like you guys cannot handle American style disposable culture. <laughs> everything's no, thrown away. Everything. They've got little little t towels i mean they're all towels in essence the baby wipes but they've yeah. okay how can we sell baby wipes to people who don't have babies i know what we'll do yeah. and we'll we'll put them on the end of a mop and say here you go we got an antibacterial mop thing you don't even need to use water and you've got them for the, the glass the glasses you've got them for wood surfaces you've got oh. multi-purpose oh for your toilet as well we've got it for the cloakroom we've got it for the shower room Interesting. Yeah. I, I just do because we don't have that particular problem. We have other problems. But one thing that I noticed when I was researching the 15 minute cities, which is in your back, well, not in your backyard, is in your country anyway, yes. uh, is that they and this is a worldwide thing that's happening here, too. They stopped when they when they have to get approval for a new development or whatever. They used to have to assess the impact on traffic. Yes. And now they gave that up and they just assess total vehicle miles driven, which we all know. I mean, anybody who's ever lived in a big city like Manhattan, two miles of Manhattan is from one river to the other. That would take an hour, whereas two miles like where I am now would take like five minutes. So the amount of fuel, the amount of um, traffic congestion, the amount of exhaust, like is all radically different between those two. And they used to assess all that. And now they don't. And for me, I mean, it's a little bit of a contradiction because I think of government as being, you know, a pathocracy. But if it were not, if it weren't working against us pathologically, 
it would this would be dereliction of duty. Like yes. it would be absolutely unthinkable. And and that so I want to tell you a little thing about myself in a second about um a recent development in my life, but uh but I but I want to talk about what you were saying about who would, would run it. It's a, just an administrative thing. And I wonder, you said one one year it would be a yes. term. I like that. But I wouldn't even I don't even need elections. Like I think I, I understand there are problems with our jury service and everything, but mm-hmm. here you get ca- everybody who votes gets called for jury duty. And when you sit on those panels, they take dozens of people. Mm. They interrogate you to see if you're qualified. They, it's not if they want you or whatever. Are yeah. you mentally um, fit? Capable. Yes, to be objective about this thing. So if it were like that, like a jury selection process and every single person was eligible to be the administrator, have an administrative role, kind of like Israel has with the with the military. Now I know a lot of people who listen to me are libertarians. I understand the libertarian doctrine and I haven't I haven't abandoned it. I'm not like comfortable with that because I I'm a volunteerist at heart. Yes. But it is po- you know, it is possible that that there could be a valid governmental thing and I, and it does pop up in the Bible. Like there are kings that have validity in the Bible. Mm. Mm. Don't they? Yes. Or not. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, they're 100%. 100%. I just don't think, especially with what has taken place historically, politically, socially, etc., no one deserves all of that power. We need to be stripping. Like, let, let's go into Nobleville. Let's go into Noble Worlds. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's just what I want. It's my favorite place. <laughs> yes. It's mine too. Mine too. And if I, could, <laughs> if I could make this into a physical, outside of my own palace, if I could make this it, it manifest physically for everybody, I don't think many people wouldn't be too happy. I really don't because let, let's, let's start here. Let's start here. And we're talking financial, we're staying in those, those sort of realms. Jeff Bezos, all of these weirdos with with trillions, and that wouldn't even be a possibility in noble world. There would be a cap. Because again, what would be the purpose of you earning more than, let's say, a million pounds? What would be the... Well, huh? well I'm going to have to talk to you. This is noble, noble world is going to be... Are we in Nobleville or Noble World? Noble World. Noble World, yes. So in Monicaville... Uh, so I'm gonna we're gonna challenge you a little bit. Is that absolutely none of that wealth could exist anyway in a truly free society for a couple of reasons. One is this: these people, every single big tech person you can think of, is has benefited from really significant contributions of I would say the defense industry. Oh yes, and you know, bill, a, a trillion dollars a year of of investing in technology that that natural human existence does not need. We have human beings, they do jobs. That's all you need. Like the tech is actually worse. I think it gets us more disconnected from our humanity. I don't like it. And then I actually don't believe in patents and even copyrights. I hate to say it. Maybe I'll think a little harder on copyright, but if you've invented something and you put it out into the world, you have the first mover advantage. People will use it. And then somebody else who has the same pile of sticks and stones in his backyard can, over time, Mm. recreate what you did. So you got your money. You got your big pop for being that big brain and for selling a bunch of stuff in advance. But somebody else is going to make it a little bit better. And then you are not going to have a trillion dollars yourself. You will maybe have a billion. But, you know, there's a... It's the I really feel like it's the laws, the system that allow for that, that that would never actually happen to a single human being in a natural lifespan ever. Yeah. Yeah. Open source kind of thing, in essence. It would just by force, just simply by not putting those barriers up and manning them with the force of law. Yes. It just would happen. And, and it would change how people approach their inventions and stuff, but we've had periods in history, like I think Germany had no patents or copyrights and they were, had more technological or literary advancements. Yes, 100%. I mean, it, it's, I like the idea of it because it, it, it limits, it limits the ability for this, this, these crazy overlords that are taking place. Like, you know, even though that mentality because it would be about, look, I want to, I want to, like for, for some, some people, this is a, a real big thing. 
when I, when I, you have a start date, an end date, and a dash in the middle. Dash in the middle is the most important thing. So, like, outside of your immediate circle, like, yeah, you know, Monica, she was wonderful. She was so happy. She was vibrant. She did this, blah, blah, blah. Noble, the same. Okay, but outside of that circle, what impacts did you make? Like, were you able to to make life easier for somebody in some kind of capacity? Did you create something, a system, a product, a service, like that really benefited humanity? That's what, that, that's where I find the, 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 where the real special people are, where they, outside of the, the money, oh my God, my God, I can be a billionaire if I do that. It's like, I, I can, I can actually help people. And that's why I do what I do because it's not about, I mean, money is wonderful. It's a unit of exchange. It enables us to fly and go to the wonderful places we can go to and buy the things we want to buy. But outside of that, I am so happy. Even when I just get a DM to say, Noble, you know that show you did on this? Or when you spoke about this, I've done it now. Or oh, that, I like, I, I, that meant something to me. You were talking to me, did you? You know, everything you were saying in that last show, like... Wow, like, you was talking directly to me kind of thing. You really out of me. For me, that's the world. When I can mm. impart the information, the knowledge, the experience, and someone can grasp it and use it, that's it. I, I would say, aside from, you know, being a serving member of a family, I the greatest thing I've probably, that I can think of ever doing was um during this whole covid thing the lockdown whatever i got so many emails saying and to this day just the other day someone said this to me still you keep us sane mm. and i was like wow like to be a port in the storm to be one person to be able to do that uh was just really worthwhile like that was really really worthwhile and i agree with you and i'm gonna throw a loop i throw you for a loop of really gonna change it's a totally different idea into what mm -hmm. you're saying right now, which I never think about. Ne I just do not think about it enough. And I'm actually going to scandalize myself by admitting that today is Palm Sunday. And <laughs> the only reason I'm doing this is that this is not work for me. This is the totally joyful yes. of spending my time. Um, but I was it was Palm Sunday, so it's the Passion of the Christ. And uh, I, I realized that because I always think that, like, what's the point? I feel guilty about some, you know, material, if I exhibit materialism or self or whatever. And I thought, what what can I do? And I always think, like, Jesus, please save us. And, and I think about, like, the, the circumstances where he came, like, mm. they killed him. Like, you mm. think that the world is a bad place, and now they killed <laughs> Jesus. And I do feel bad because they kill, like, my son has Down syndrome. We have abortion, which is really... Could I, I really feel like that's the lowest <laughs> human mm. human be beings can do, but but with with the um, you know, geez. So I was like, okay, what if what if I de dedicated my life to diminishing his suffering on the cross by like being a better person, like a really better person, like a person who doesn't ever, you know, or it doesn't like. You know, one thing that I think that a lot of people do, I definitely do this, is like I'll say something, just I'll criticize somebody on TV. Like it's really uncharitable. You know what I mean? Like look at that guy's hair. <laughs> like, do I really have to say that? You know what I mean? And I like I always feel like the the greatest achievement, you know, of my life would be just like not say stuff like that. Like that I because my mother's ninety four, she's dying, and she should not die. I shouldn't say that. She's ninety four. She's preparing for death. Mm -hmm. And she, like, you cannot get her to talk smack about anyone under any circumstances. Yeah. yeah. She's like, I'm too close. I am not, yeah. or not dragging me into that. Yeah. So, and I thought, wow, like, she's thinking that now. Like, I should think that. I should think that maybe that's it. Like, this, it's all hopeless. Like, this world, not in a bad way. You know what I mean? In a C.S. Mm -hmm. Lewis way. Like, this yes. is a material domain. This is Talk not a spiritual domain. What are you going to do with that knowledge? Save the world, like, saving souls. Like, what you're saying, like, reaching yeah. people Mm -hmm. We'll have a deeper understanding of something that is like a first step. And maybe this conversation is like gives enlightenment or whatever. But to me, even if you're just giving me enlightenment to me in this moment, 
But that, you know, I feel like maybe that's, and oh, and it gave me this insight into purgatory. So <laughs> only, I, I thought only Catholicism might have purgatory, but I realized that purgatory, I carry so much like guilt and concern about making social faux pas or, yeah. you know, sin stuff. I don't want, like, I would not feel comfortable walking through those pearly gates with that kind of baggage. So it might be good to be able to purge it, pur you know, like maybe there yes. is. So they, maybe there is like, so, you know, these wisdom, you like can you know, peel it layer by layer. And that's mm -hmm. the purpose of this life is to get to naturally like to watch that naturally unfold because you really can't just be born into understanding it all. No, not at all. You've got to experience it. Knowledge, wisdom and understanding. And it, it can go in different, different ways. I like to say in that sort of way, because once you have knowledge and some people will correct me but this is the way i like to see it. knowledge wisdom so you, your understanding um after the wisdom part of the knowledge so we've got knowledge we've got some information the wisdom of that information is coming through the understanding so oh now i understand it Okay, oh, that's what it meant because I had all this information. And I just went from point A to a point Z and didn't go through all of the D, H, G, L, M, N. Oh, now I put it all together. It's the alphabet. Oh, it was just a bunch of letters originally. Oh, okay. Oh, and those letters, if you put the letters together, they can create words and then the words can create sentences, paragraphs, etc. So it's, it's, it's a mission. And the way I look at it, and I know you you come from more of a, a Catholic background, which why well, that's where I grew up. Um, but I find as you're doing purgatory and this kind it it bind remember religio, bind, restrain, hold back. That's what it's doing to you. That's what it's doing to many people who who dogmatically and, and that's not in a bad way hold to these traditions and customs. Whereas in, I always say and it is written, the kingdom of heaven is in you. If you want the connection with the most high, if you want to be the, the fruitful, you want to live the, the best life that you can be, a father O'Hare is not going to help you do that. What's going to help I do, you? I do find that the, the ritual does help. The practice does help the focus and the discipline for me. But, uh, okay, so yes, but he he's not going to help, but sorry. So, no, 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 that's fine. So, in regards to the, like, rosary, that that methodology, when you're doing your prayers and stuff, yeah? Or you do mean something more? Oh, I mean, like, when I go to church, like, I had mm. I had a priest today. I just I love him. I love He had mm. one time, he said the first homily I ever heard from him, he was just like, the New World Order. It's, it's evil, and it is. I was like, never heard that before ever in the Catholic Church. I was like, this guy. That wow, is like, often you never heard that? Yeah, no, he was. He is a base. And I just feel like this opportunity that, you know, that, that there's a lot of an intellectual, you know, a lot of answers in there, but it's so corrupted, of course, mm -hmm. that it's impossible to get to unless you get this guy. Once in a while, you just get this yeah. one guy and he helps yeah. keep you focused. And that's just, for me, I, I, I cannot presume to understand other people's journey at all. Like, it is a major mm. weakness of mine. I cannot walk in other people's shoes. I just don't know how. So I just say for me, but I, but it is still... It's still the same journey. I mean, you have to look into yourself. Yes. Like it's just, but I get these insights because I just love hearing what he has to say. It's just, mm. but, but, and, and I'm moved by these rituals, like the passion, like I'm, yeah. so I'm like, it's a very moving, mm -hmm. you really understand it. And every, I've heard it many, many, many dozens of times. And still like today I was like, whoa, whoa. Like I didn't yeah. even hear, I didn't catch that bar. You know? Last time. Yeah. Now yeah. This, yeah. 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 Because people are charismatic. Sometimes, you know, people, um, you know, will really, uh, I guess, draw it out of you kind of thing and give that connection so you can. Yes. But I, but I think we agree that, that, that is the essence of this journey. And I always ask the same question. I always want to know your evolving thoughts on it. You know, and it's how how we live in this world. So I asked you before, like, what is what is noble world? So 
this obscene wealth, let's get back to that. With this yeah. obscene wealth is not okay. You know, it, and, and I would say it's not, it just isn't natural. It's not okay because, you know, it's just simply not natural. It's and of course, nothing unnatural is, is okay. Nothing on that. Of course, it? and it, it, it's ungodly. And what what and some people who are non-religious or non, you know, from the three Abrahamic faiths, wow, oh, God, oh, let's switch off. No, we we have to use those kind of terminology because we know that there is good and there's evil. So let's let's go down that way. It's not good. This materialism, yeah. this this degradation of society, of the spiritual self, of the physical self. It we can all see it's not good. It's not good for women to be pumping stuff into their lips, into their snake venom, into their face, fillers, all this kind of stuff. Like, look, again, from the lower self, some women look very attractive with all that kind of stuff. I, I won't deny it, you know, with all the airbrushing and the photoshopping. Of course, some of these women look absolutely beautiful. I, I'd be a fool to, to say that they don't. Some of them, I will say, some of them. And you see others, and you're like... What world am I on? Where you think that doing these excess stuff to yourself looks cool, looks good, looks desirable, but we've been conditioned into men now thinking the ideal of beauty is for women to have these huge, accentuated, like black women lips where 20 years ago, oh, you got big lips, <laughs> you know. Oh, you've got you, you're too fat, man. You know that's and big stuff. boobs. Big right. boobs used to be like a ding. So yeah. like, the only reason I got away with having like a big butt, sad big boobs, and now the skinny girls have big boobs, and then yes. it's the same. I'm like, I, I should give a little extra credit for the no. <laughs> so oh. <laughs> so yeah, like a, the natural thing, everybody has their little basket of goodies. But mm. the, but now like money can you know give every you know everybody can buy those masks and then it's at the expense of other things. I see that's where I have a problem is that I cannot. It's very hard for me to to separate between God created heaven and earth. He said it was good, uh -huh. and how you know how to how to not be vain or materialistic you know i want it i want it it's good <laughs> you know what i want it and it's bad that i want it it's bad that i try to get it is so it like bad? that is a problem but i don't is, know but is vanity and materialism is it bad in in, in its essence in that because these are all things outside of the manipulation let's take manipulation out of it let's take the marketing out of it yeah we're all vain we, 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 we... Yeah, it's bad because it distracts you from jesus that's why like from God's like a first commandment thing. That's why drug addiction is bad because you mm -hmm. cannot live a good life. It's not because drug addiction itself is bad. It's that it replaces mm -hmm. that pursuit of the of the good. Mm -hmm.